Hi, I'm Stephen Faroux, and this is the seventh and last installment in my video overview of my book, Getting the Message Across, How to Use Presentation Software Such as PowerPoint to Give Interesting Technical Presentations. Chapter 7, entitled Putting the Magic Together, shows how to combine transitions and animations to obtain a really fluid presentation. The best way to illustrate it is with one of the non-technical case studies in the book, in which I present some stock characters from Commedia dell'arte, a masked and mostly improvised form of popular theatre, born in Italy in the 16th century. Commedia dell'arte was extremely influential in Western Europe. The dullest way to present the most famous characters is a bullet point list with a full sentence describing the moral characteristics of each character. As a presenter, there isn't much that you can do other than reading the slide aloud or paraphrasing it, which isn't any better. The famous French 18th century philosopher Voltaire wrote that the secret of being boring is to say everything, and nothing is more boring than a speaker who has no value to a printout of the slides. This is why you are usually told to cut down the amount of text, which allows you to tell the same thing, but without letting your audience read it ahead of you. You can improve your presentation by presenting each character in turn and telling what you have to say about each one before proceeding to the next. It's better than the first presentation, but still pretty dull. It's a pity to talk about performing arts and only have text especially when a lot of great graphics that are in the public domain are easy to find. The white rectangle is ugly, the format is unsuitable for extending the image from edge to edge, so the solution is to remove the background. We can then have one slide per character and a much better presentation. You'll notice, though, that even if we have continuity between the slides, the presentation is still very much slide-oriented, and in spite of the fade between slides, you can see clearly each slide being displayed in turn. It's also very text-oriented in a way. Instead of keeping from slide to slide the description of characters already presented, what about being more visual and keeping a smaller, desaturated image? After all, people were recognizing characters through their costumes. This is what it could give. There is, however, an issue that didn't exist with text. Each time I introduce a new character, two images change on screen. A new character appears, which is fine, and the previous one becomes smaller, and this side of the screen may distract from the new character. Somebody in your audience will obviously notice the new character, but on the opposite side of the slide, there is a disturbing replacement of a Galakino with a small Alakino, and this replacement will require some brain processing. It's fairly obvious, and anybody should understand how Alakino implicitly went from one slide to the next. But while the brain is solving this easy riddle, the focus is no longer on Pantalone. I believe that it's good to make an audience think but only on what is worth the effort, and I wouldn't put the transformations of Alokino between two slides in this category. This is why I'm going to introduce an additional slide on which what was implicit will become explicit. On this slide, Alokino will shrink and at the same time move to the place where it appears on the next slide. I will also take advantage of this slide to make Pantalone come on stage like an actor not fade into place, and at the same time, I'll also display the short text. There is one point that is important, though. In the transition pane, which once again may look different in your version of PowerPoint, I'll uncheck what says to switch to the next slide on a click, and check what says to switch to the next slide after zero seconds. That means that all animations will start automatically when the slide is displayed, and once they have executed, will switch automatically to the next slide. I call such a slide a fugitive slide, and here is what will happen. I will first be on this slide. 
Then I click, switch to the Fugitive slide and trigger its animations, then switch to the next slide without having to click anything. My click takes me from the slide at the top to the slide at the bottom exactly as if there were no Fugitive slide, except that moves that were implicit would become explicit. Let's see what it gives in practice. You'll notice that you are no longer seeing slides in succession, but it becomes much more like a film. Fugitive slides are a technique that I use very often, including, as I explain it in detail in the book, to show computer code that doesn't fit on a single screen. To conclude, as I'm practicing what I'm preaching, these videos are nothing more than PowerPoint presentations. I advise you to take any of them, turn the sound off, and give attention not to what I'm talking about, but to how I'm showing it. I'm mostly using what I've presented in these videos.